Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Giovanni Giacoia and uh, I'm one of the lecturers at the City of Glasgow College. This is a presentation to give you an idea about the Applied Arts course and so that you can get a better understanding, first of all, of what is meant by Applied Arts. Secondly, about the variety of um, subjects we teach and finally about the links with the industry and possibilities um, once you finish the course. So I uh, will start with the next slide. Okay, so the first question is what is applied arts? And it's something very often you find people don't, they cannot quite work out uh, the, the sort of the origin of applied arts. And this is a long debate, um, but I won't bore you uh, with it. But I can just say that uh, applied arts is interested in, uh, at the same time, in the decorative practice, but also in the utility and functionality of uh, object production. And it operates in this intersection between fine art, design and craft. There is a sort of like nomadic nature to the applied arts, and uh, but the study of applied arts offer a very unique opportunity to break down boundaries for that reason and to work in an interdisciplinary way, so crossing disciplines constantly, moving from one to the other. And through the different workshops, students will learn to do that. The presentation will be divided in two parts. The first part will focus mainly uh, on uh, the variety of methods, media and processes uh, available um, at, the, at the college, so the variety of subjects that are being taught, uh, moving from drawing to printmaking, textile, ceramic, glass and jewellery. It will then move to to show examples of link with the creative industries um, and uh, through different uh, projects that uh, we run. Uh, at the other college. Uh, so that includes also like workshops we do uh, where we invite visiting artists, but also the end of the year show the students um, participate too uh, when they um, complete their course. Okay, so uh, the first part is workshops. So um, let's start with it. Uh, the first um, subject uh, I would like to talk about is drawing. Drawing is really essential, it's really important because it's at the core of the creative process. Students learn to use drawing to express their idea, to develop their idea, to test their ideas. This doesn't mean that drawing must be understood uniquely as uh, observational drawing. Yes, there are forms that we start with observational drawing, as you can see in this image, where students draw from an object, but we then move to the reverse. Instead of drawing from the object, we are uh, looking into generating drawings, drawings themselves. How can you generate drawings uh, to in order to find something? And as you can see in these images, there is a more fluid approach to drawing uh, in this way and this is what we would call developmental drawing when drawing just moves and shifts away and it keeps changing shape and it really allows through the mark making both through um, a more like um, considerate analysis uh, of it uh, allows to um, to to advance with one's ideas uh, visual ideas and here is a sketchbook page just to give you an idea. Um, there is like the teaching of drawing um, takes place using a sketchbook and the sketchbook becomes the place where you keep adding material. So like there is a, both what we call primary sources. So what you draw directly yourself from life or from your direct experience and the secondary sources or so a collection of uh, found images or any other material of research uh, of an uh, um, artist. Um, and as you can see here, the initial object, the initial idea or observational drawing is then translated through negative space, through collage, which opens up more, uh, a stronger or um, a more advanced understanding of that very specific shape. Another important and fundamental uh, practice of drawing is live drawing with live uh, models. 
and uh, it is really important for students to have that experience because they they are freed in a way from the subject so they don't have to worry about what to draw the subject is there and they can be very uh, free to experiment through the mark making through the use of material so they can just focus on the idea of a subject that is the body uh, the idea of space that is the actual room and they because those are given to them they can just like um, have total freedom in imagining possible way of drawing the subject through wet or dry media and this through life drawing that they um, the students really advance in their drawing uh, skills also it's really important for the performance costume unit the students do during the year because the understanding of the body is uh, fundamental in order to um, design um, uh, a costume. So moving away from drawing, uh, a strong emphasis is on printmaking. Uh, through printmaking, the students discover uh, how to work using a matrix. And by matrix, I mean an image that is always the same, but it can, it can allow repetition, it can allow the discovery of pattern making, and it um, it can allow different uh, uh, possibilities uh, in the use of uh, color. Uh, so again, you know, just like we're talking about life drawing frees the student from having to worry too much about the subject, uh, having a matrix, uh, you can actually discover mark making through accidents or through making because you don't have to worry anymore about the subject because it's, uh, it's there. Um, the printmaking uh, we explore uh, includes intaglio technique and includes uh, relief technique. And uh, as you can see, the students in this image are working on a dry point, whereas the actual image is an image of a monoprint that is um, a different technique. And here is uh, one of the students ho holding a screen. Uh, the screen printing is also used, especially in this, um, the po possibilities it offers to uh, develop patterns and uh, onto textile and uh, in this case the uh, actual uh, pattern in the textile led to a scarf and to a belt uh, so uh, an object has got a very specific uh, function now um, again you know the the the, the, the screen printing is a um, a stencil technique uh, which is um, can be done through drawing or can be done through uh, photographic images or can be done through uh, actual cutting out physical stencil so it's another important um, tool and discovery for the students and we are moving now to a different subject uh, being taught at the college that is textile um, and uh, the way textile is taught includes both uh, some traditional embroidery and sewing machine uh, techniques but also a lot of uh, experimental techniques uh, that encourage the students to uh, manipulate fabric and discover uh, their own uh, understanding of actually of uh, of the material uh, can it be stretched uh, can it be dyed can it be pierced uh, can it be tied um, wh what can we do to this piece of fabric and every time we do that what happens and what kind of uh, um, what happens to the original idea do we gain a better understanding of the way we can develop our idea thanks to the material thanks to the suggestions given by the material so here you can see example of just uh, hand embroidery and uh, other uh, different techniques but also here you can see uh, examples of using a sewing machine to develop uh, initial um, samples that then can be used to uh, create a bigger piece for instance a costume but also not only there is uh, an intervention on the actual uh, uh, structure of the fabric through thread but also the other possibility is like actually decorative and painterly possibilities uh, being offered by dyeing uh, methods through dye baths uh, 
so we explore, for instance, uh, batik and uh, shiburi and uh, uh, different other techniques. So also hit dai transfer is another technique we very often explore, but this is just a small amount of the variety of the techniques these students are introduced to. So through color, they explore the possibility of actually uh, playing with the surface instead of playing with the structure of textile. That is more something they do uh, through embroidery and the sewing machine. So here they, um, they explore the decorative uh, possibilities offered by uh, color. Okay, so the next one, we're moving again, we're shifting to a different uh, kind of uh, subject, is ceramics and sculpture. So um, what uh, we ask students is to discover or to, to, to understand, to get an understanding uh, of the difference between um, a functional object and an object that is more um, to more like a sort of fine art object. So an object that has no function, but is just there to stimulate uh, conversation, to stimulate thought, to stimulate uh, thinking. And so it's got more of sort of a, a strong idea, but a strong concept, but also like it's interesting that three dimensionality without uh, having to focus too much on the function. And here is an example of a ceramic piece straight out of the kiln. Uh, so the crocodile head has been glazed, whereas in this image we can see the way maquettes have been built, the way students are thinking about, okay, I want to have a sculpture of a dog, what do I need to do in order to build that structure before I move to apply clay, before I move to apply mod rock, before I move to the next step. And now there's a certain amount of uh, techniques and methods taught to the students, but there's also a variety of um, methods and techniques and ways of handling the materials are discovered by the students themselves themselves through personal research or through making, through an understanding of the actual uh, material they are handling because they need to problem solve, because they need to progress with their idea and sometimes there are so many obstacles they need to overcome. And here again, uh, is, it shows like a, like a simple um found object in this case uh, the little uh, lid at the top of a can can be used and what happens when you instead of one you produce many and what happens when you change size what happens when you change color so there's all these sort of questions the students that the student was asking um was asking uh, through the work and again, here are some examples of handling clay, handling mud rock, using chicken wire. Uh, there's also very often like from clay, we move to mold making and then through the mold making, we explore uh, repetition, how to produce the same object over and over again. What happens when we move to decorate the object? Okay. The next uh, specialism is uh, uh, glass, and uh, these are some examples of uh, glass work produced by the students in response. And there's something I forgot to mention so far. Every time we ask the students to do something, we give them a brief. Uh, so they need to, and very often it's very short, and in this case the brief was palimpsest, so it's a personal interpretation of that specific uh, brief by the student. And so, as you can see, some people developed it more um, in a more sort of a, uh, representational way and some others in a more uh, ephemeral or more like abstract way. But also like sometimes the shape is a standard shape, some others like uh, is broken or is overlapped. So there's different way of handling the same uh, material by the students depending on their specific interpretation of the brief. And here is another um, slide with a variety of uh, samples produced by the students during the glass uh, workshop. And I'll give you just a few seconds more and we are moving to another image. And again here, not only there is an exploration of color, 
overlapping, layering, text, representation, but there's also an example of sculpture, what happens when the glass becomes bumpy, what happens when it becomes more 3D, but there's no colour at all, and also what happens when uh, odd materials like wire is introduced into the piece. Uh, we're now moving uh, to the next uh, specialism um, taught uh, as part of the applied arts. So there are four workshops. I'm just doing a little recap. Uh, there's the textile, we look at the ceramic and sculpture. Uh, now we looked at glass and we're moving to the last one of the, the workshop specific specialism that is jewelry. So jewelry is explored for um, his body adornment and decorative aspect, but uh, it's also challenged. So uh, a jewelry object is not just something that you can wear on the body, but it's also like something that can become sculptural, like in this case, uh, but still it looks very precious. And also here, that is a variation of the same idea. What happens if I take an everyday object and I start sticking in all these little pearls? What happens, uh, you know, when I look at it? You know, how do I change the nature of it? How do I change? So like from a functional object, you now it's a decorative object. So I'm taking that object because it gives me a sort of a, a plinth, a pedestal. It gives me like a, a base to, um, to stick. Uh, in all these different objects. And again, here there is uh, uh, some more work produced by our students, again, uh, as part of the jewelry unit. And again, um, there is like something uh, really beautiful happening in the way materials are explored for their quality, for instance, hard and soft, uh, for instance, color. Or absence of color, but the um, you some of them, like for instance, the one on uh, with the long blue strips, is made out of an IKEA bag. So there is also like a strong conceptual um, idea attached to the piece, and uh, it can be it's, it's like it like, looks like a neck piece. So it could be really a body alone. So it actually, as a function compared to the other two objects, which are actually uh, more uh, sort of. Uh, uh, opening up different kind of uh, questions. And again, here is another body adornment piece. can be worn and is done with recycled materials. So there is a lot of, uh, very often students like, uh, are, uh, enjoy using craft materials, but also non-craft materials. So what happens when I use non-craft and what happens when I recycle materials? Can I still achieve, uh, can I, uh, uh, can I still achieve something which is beautiful, which is uh, visually strong. And yes, I would say yes, in this case, you know, just like with the work that deals with expanding, expansion, inflatable, changing shape, that, that looks like a, a necklace. So uh, in this first part, I have, um, we have looked at all the different uh, specialism available at the college. So from drawing, that becomes like this very important tool to discover 2D and 3D forms. Um, moving to how the ideas that I discover through drawing can be tested through the use of a different material, of a different method, of a different process. So like what happens if I test that idea through glass, textile, ceramic, sculptural forms, or jewellery. We're now moving into the final part of uh, this uh, presentation, looking at the links uh, with the industry. So what other opportunities does the, course, does the course offer? Okay, so let's have a look at the links with the industry. I mean, the links with the industry, um, by that, uh, I mean uh, the different projects that students are involved with, and where there is also an external body involved with, and which opens up uh, future possibilities for the students. The first one I'd like to talk about is a manifesto uh, project exhibition uh, the students work on every year. Uh, the word manifesto means that the students are asked 
to set the rules of the game. Basically, the students are asked to uh, decide the art rules they want to use when making art. So, for instance, there will be four rules, and this can be either uh, conceptual, I will make only work which deals with the domestic space, for instance, or they can be um, very specific. I will only make work using color red. I will only make work using soft materials. I will only make work using lines and so on and so forth. So uh, this is a project that uses uh, textile and screen printing as the main uh, main tools. And there is uh, uh, there was also strong emphasis, uh, especially in the last one on uh, weaving. Uh, now this project was thanks to the incorporation of weavers. Uh, we um, uh, we were given some funding to buy some new looms that were used by the students. So um, that uh, is, again, the link with the industry and the, um, also uh, the, the students were asked to uh, produce work for an exhibition. Here is an example of the exhibition space where the work was displayed. So the students, not only uh, they are maker, but also they are maker of a specific product that needs to be displayed. They need to think about display. Will it be on the floor? Will it be uh, on a plinth? Uh, will it be sitting on a chair? So they have to ask themselves a lot of those questions, which is the questions you have to ask yourself when you are uh, in a real situation of making and maybe it's a commission or maybe it's going to a gallery or maybe it's going to a really specific um, context and so you need to be aware of that uh, but also you know there's an opening uh, there was an opening and um, during the opening the students could do uh, networking I could talk about their work so it's a really it's a really important learning uh, experience uh, another opportunity the students have uh, is some uh, learning study trips. Um, this one was four students were picked for the study trip, students that uh, were the recipient of uh, the performance costume uh, prize. And uh, they uh, went to the model, model school in Nuremberg in Germany, where they could learn about uh, dressmaking. So if the applied arts course uh, is focused on textile and textile manipulation, embroidery, uh, performance uh, costume. However, there is no such uh, there is no such a thing as dressmaking. So it's something is not directly taught as part of the textile course, but uh, they had the opportunity to learn how to make dressmaking. And at the same time, the students that taught them in Nuremberg then came to visit uh, Glasgow uh, in order to learn how to develop ideas through drawing, through testing, through sampling, how to design a piece. So it's something that actually uh, the students from Nuremberg learned from our students. Um, and here is another uh, important, uh, is the performance costume I've been mentioning. Uh, the students uh, as part of the course are asked to, uh, for their performance costume unit, they're asked to uh, produce, to design, and then make a costume that is based on a dance of contemporary art, very often very abstract, as dance is, and they need to think about the uh, narrative attached to the costume, to the uh, actually uh, the the real functionality of that object when it's being used to perform a very specific dance. So it's a big challenge, but also it's a very exciting project. And the students always respond really well. Now, there are only three prizes being awarded by the Bonham Makers and Dyers of Glasgow. Um, however, it's a great learning uh, opportunity for all the students because they are uh, making something, responding to a brief, and then, you know, of course, they will be uh, judged and um, critiqued and the prize will be awarded uh, to uh, three of uh, the students. So despite winning or not, it's an incredible learning experience. And uh, the judges are, uh, the jury is always uh, external uh, to, to the college um, and uh, is uh, selected by the Bonham Makers and Dyers of Glasgow. And here is one of the costumes who won the prize in 2019.
So it's a beautifully made, beautifully designed, and uh, also like with beautiful mood boards to show the ideas and the motivated specific aesthetic uh, choices. Okay, finally, uh, what I like to conclude with is like um, the uh, visiting artist workshops. Uh, they're really important. Again, we try to uh, invite artists that can propose something we don't have the time to teach as part of the course because it's a really jam-packed course with so many um, methods, techniques, approaches that have already been taught. So this one is a, a weaving workshop uh, being taught. Um, and as you can see, all the students are really busy learning. And the next one is about a bookmaking workshop. So the students have the possibility not only to decide their visuals, to draw, design their book, but they can actually make their own book. So uh, it offers like very strong creative uh, opportunity, but it's a really, they, can, they, they were able to make this really beautiful crafty uh, objects that, um, uh, that collected all uh, their beautiful prints done during the printmaking uh, unit. And here we go, this is just a final image. Uh, the end of the year show, uh, the diploma show, is basically when the students can uh, display their work, present it to the public, uh, where they can they need to think about um, business cards, they need to think about how to present their work, they need to think about discussing about their work and uh, because it's an important is a very uh, unique opportunity to network uh, with uh, people involved in the creative industry creative industries okay and then the next one um, I like to conclude with some comments from some of our alumni students uh, so I ask them if you were to suggest a course or not to suggest a course, what would you say? What would you suggest a course? Uh, so yeah, here are some comments uh, from uh, Charlotte Rogers, currently studying at the Edinburgh College of Arts and a master's in glass. Uh, here, here is her comment. Uh, the applied arts course stands out as it offers the opportunity to learn and experience experience different specialized practices whilst laying the foundation for sketchbook work and critical thinking. It offers a fantastic opportunity to develop a broad spectrum of artistic skills and can be a springboard for further specialized study if art school or university is the aim. Without the Applied Arts HND at the City of Glasgow College, I would have never been able to undertake a master's degree in glass at Edinburgh College of Arts with the prospect of going on to doing a PhD. If you're interested in a broad spectrum of craft and want to explore different ways to express yourself through art, then this is a course for you. And here is another one from Diane Green, alumni 2020. The Applied Arts course at the City of Glasgow College challenged me to think in a whole new way. I made the art I never would have imagined. I started to say something with my work. I became a much more independent thinker and started to really stretch the art materials I was introduced to. The lecturers were really inspiring and supportive. And the final one uh, is Anna Leila Woodhouse, uh, alumni 2020. I would truly recommend the Applied Arts course to individuals who wish to open their minds, explore traditional artisan techniques through various mixed media. It really helps to cross over from one discipline to another. The course is wonderful for students who don't know yet which discipline they would like to study full time at degree level. It is really important, like really the course offers a variety of approaches, so mixed media and its approaches. So it's really important to know that, that it really gives you a sense of everything. And then if you really want to specialize more and more, you can move into that very specific specialism at degree level. And uh, I will conclude. Okay, uh, finally, the entry requirement uh, for the HNC is two hires at grade C or above in art, and, in art and English, and two national four qualifications or an NQ or equivalent qualification. Additional selection is a portfolio and an interview. If English is your first language, uh, you will need to have a minimum ESL intermediate level two. 
uh, and then uh, for the NQ is national five art and design, national five English at grade C or above, and uh, or other equivalent qualification or experience. Additional selection requirements: you will be invited uh, for a group interview or individual interview. And then you will need to provide uh, uh, examples of your uh, art and design works. You can bring a portfolio. And again, the ESO requirement. Now, hopefully this gave you a sense of the course. Sorry if it was too long. Um, there's so much to uh, talk about in the applied arts just because it's no, it doesn't go in just one specific discipline, but it crossovers. It crossover, it crossovers so many different disciplines. Um, Therefore, um, yeah, this is why. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please uh, get in touch. Okay, thank you so much for listening.